Yeah. <laughs> that, that sense that uh, I know for you guys that you did an awful lot of work. You, you were with Guy during the lunch break. You would talk about how exactly we want to approach this rip up all the old celluloid ideas about Sherlock go back to the books and and and, and becomes almost like a Victorian Fight Club. Was it difficult? Always, you know, as, as you made the film, deciding. I know you said that the balance was Sherlock picks the lock, Watson kicks the door in. This mm. sort of notion of your interplay was that right from the start? Was it there, or did you always sort of evolve it as the movie went on? I'd say it was there from the start, it, it evolved, and it evolved. Yeah. It Both. was there from the start, which is kind of what piqued everyone's interest. Lionel Wigram um, figured out the way to reinvigorate this and, and, uh, and, and make it rediscoverable, because it's amazing to me that Sherlock Holmes in this sequel-driven industry hasn't already been pulled up and hashed out and done uh, poorly. So we just kind of got lucky. And um, I remember the first time we met, though, which was actually in this hotel, and started work straight away. We went then down, having 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 kind of you know thrown things around and laughed a lot and, and realized that you know okay this is a this, this, this is a, this is a, this is a scenario I could I could well well um, enjoy for four months. We went downstairs and met with Guy and Lionel, and as we sat there, we were already saying, oh God, yeah, wouldn't it be great that, that of course Watson is incredibly anal and clean and straight up and Holmes eats like this and drops things and immediately there. We're starting to get a sense of this dynamic that, that, like you said, if he picks a lot, Watson smashes it open. If, if Watson's obsessed with starch collars and everything, then he's, yeah. you know, got cravats and behem. You know, so once you start on that, you've got that equation. It, you, it just grows, and you, you get and get it down to the minutei or in big bold brushstrokes. Of course, people read an awful lot into iconic figures, whether it be Lauren Hardy or, or Burton Ernie, or they try to figure out relationships. And I know when you made a statement, the New York Post picked up on, on you saying that uh, Holmes and Watson are two men who happen to be roommates, wrestle a lot, and share a bed. It's badass. That might be a misquote, but it, it, that's what their quote was. No, that, that actually is not a misquote. Oh, okay. I, I so they, they, they ran with that, of course, being that this is all a homoerotic, too homoerotic for middle America. And I think Michael mm -hmm. Medved, a, a, an American critic, went, got into a lather, which uh, made him hate himself even more because he didn't like men in lathers. But uh, were you even kind of aware of that sort of notion that, of course, there's a, a relationship between any two men who are yeah. very, very kind of connected and close and whether we should even hint at it or touch on it? Or well, if you hint at it or touch at it or if we meant to play it that way, we certainly wouldn't uh, not talk about it now. The truth mm -hmm. be told is, you know, we felt we had some understanding of what it's like for two guys who get very intimate and are at close quarters and who kind of can't live with each other and can't live without each other, but the great thing is it was inherent in the storyline that Watson is really trying to get away from Holmes, according to Holmes right at the beginning. He's not actually trying to get away from him, he's fallen in love, and he has a practice, and he's trying to, you know that situation, you're, I love you dude, but I'm trying to maintain my action, I have a real life outside of, uh, you know, clubbing and gallivanting and, and almost getting beat down by bouncers with you, I mean that's the my old 1980s interpretation, but these adventures in Victorian London, and yes, hmm. Holmes is a genius and, and, and Watson is a retired military guy who probably is a little anhedonic, to yeah, use indeed. my own uh, fantastic word before noon, and that. is wondering where that sense of adventure went in his life, and indeed. maybe he's saying, I have to put those things away now. I survived, it's time to make a family, it's time to make a practice, but he also knows that his practice with Holmes is also, it's about justice. And, and, and also, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of sad that people always think codependency means that there's there's something sexual going on. I mean, the truth is, you know, these, these, are, these are two guys who need each other's company, don't want each other's company, support each other, back each other up when they're, when they're, when they're, when they're on their failings, and uh, there doesn't need to be something sexual in there. It's, it's just, uh, it's friendship, you know. My half hour is just up. Uh, you ha you've been to Ireland lots of times, but you haven't. I know I've got a rap now, but, but I've spoken to you a few times in the last year, but it's outrageous given your Irish blood, and that is all your looks and talent and all that comes from that. So, yeah, it's just so you should really go back and pay Thank homage you. to uh, those I roots. have I haven't made it yet, and when I do, it will be uh, a thing of beauty, and you'll be probably one of the first to know. Rock and roll. I'll put the kettle on. I'll be talking to you guys. <laughs>